much. Uh, good morning. Uh, this talk is like a funny talk about um, uh, Android malware, which is called LightSpy, and it has like a version for the iOS. Uh, and it's talk about how I spent a couple of days doing like threat hunting. Uh, so first about, about myself, I'm Viktor Chebyshev. Uh, I'm a mobile malware analyst at Red Fabric. Uh, I do uh, CTI and uh, mobile reverse engineering each day. Uh, and uh, the story is like, not like about technical uh, points of view of the malware functionality, not about like that, but uh, about how we can connect s several different chunks of information into one chain. And the uh, connection point is like this, it's like a numpad, something really obvious. If you try to type the numbers that way, starting from right to left, you'll receive this number. This number is like a key um, to all research that I made. Uh, and uh, the first appearance of that number is like this. Uh, it's a part of the URL path for the exploit for the iOS. It was like first published by Kaspersky a long time ago. It's like about iOS malware, that really, really nice, interesting uh, modeler uh, and quite complicated. But we got second appearance of that number with another uh, like payload inside, which is called smallmload.jar. And this was posted by Lockout last year and they attributed this kind of malware to APT41. Quite interesting. Uh, they uh, localized this uh, sample as like uh, some kind of intermediate loader for something else, which is called T1. And they said that C2 was already down. So for me, it's like dead end. Should I go the next or should I stop my research? But uh, we at Thread Fabric never give up. Uh, and I said myself, mm, wait, maybe I can find some additional C2s that could be work uh, in my case. What I did, I just look up for the server with the same network as already known server with two open, open, open ports, which we saw on previous slides. And we got six candidates for that. Not like zero, but six. So I know the fi file path with which I should download. I got five or six uh, C2s, candidates. What I did, I just asked them, hey, C2, give me this file. And C2 said, here you are, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, C2 seems to be working. That's quite interesting. Let's continue. So I reverse engineered that uh, small mlo.jar and it's like a super simple uh, downloader that will download some additional stuff, which is called core. Hmm, core looks like interesting. Hmm, but in the meantime, it's like super small application, nothing really special from that point of view, except one moment. To download the core, it will ask the server for additional file, which is called version TXT. Uh, and again, our fancy number here with the, um, with the URL pass. And the funny moment, this file contained um, two fields, three fields, let's say. The date, hmm, interesting, file name of the second stage file, which will be downloaded, and MD5 hash of this payload. So we got three parameters that quite interesting. Uh, I found actually not like one or six servers, I found dozens of them. And each one of them provided me with different uh, version TXT file. And I got like a whole history of the campaign. So different years, different versions, uh, different sets. But what about the core? So what is it? So it's obviously it's encrypted for sure. But the algorithm of the encryption is quite simple. It's a basic SOAR. And uh, I want you to remember, let's say, the, at least, not like algorithm, okay, it's a, no problem, but the function name, which is XOR decode memory. Okay, XOR decode memory. Uh, so that moment, what I got? I got initial stage, which was published by Lockout, and I got two separate uh, payloads, which are not like 
APK files. You cannot directly run them on the device. You have to somehow manipulate with them. But the problem is that these kind of payloads do not contain the C2 number. So they cannot act uh, separately with that. Uh, so I got two approaches to continue my analysis. The first approach, static. So I can reverse engineer the core, take a look around at uh, functionality, maybe comments, how they act on device. But in that case, I don't know how long C2 will stay up. So should I go statically or maybe I somehow can mm, manipulate with the core to trick it to run on the device. And I followed mm, second approach. I created a Frankenstein application. <laughs> so it basically will do almost the same things that small M load jar did. So it will unpack and soar the core, provide it with the C2 and start it up. And uh, what the benefits I will get? I will remain full control on that monster. I can use uh, traffic interception, debugging. I can stop the process anytime and I remain under full control of the app. Uh, and guess what? It ran perfectly, with lots of exceptions, with a lot of errors for sure, because no permissions, nothing uh, else. Uh, but in the meantime, we got at least one permission, internet. So the core startup, uh, gathered all information about my uh, device without some custom sandbox, just a regular image that from, came from Google. And uh, funny note, uh, it started communicated with the C2 using WebSockets. So it worked perfectly. And next thing is that during this kind of short communication, it's like less than 10 minutes, uh, I received the comment from C2. Hey guy, you got not only core, we got 14 more plugins for it. Oh, mm, I got... Nice idea, guys, thank you for that plugins. Uh, but uh, I tried like gather as much information as it possible. So I ask each known server that already related to this campaign, hey guys, give me all the plugins, give me all the cores. And it's like a few pieces of, a, a few uh, strings of the code in Python. So to that moment, time to relax. Time to relax uh, and do my favorite job, static analysis. So as a result of this static analysis, we came to this, this kind of uh, layout. So we got carrier application. It could be Telegram Messenger, WeChat, or Baidu application. It will download small mload.jar, which is simplistic small uh, downloader. This downloader will ask server for the current version of the payload, which is the core, and will download the core. The core will download plugins and we'll communicate with the C2 and create database with the, all the necessary things. So I will focus on the core and a few plugins in this talk. The core, the main orchestrator, it will communicate with the C2. Uh, it will export exfiltration function for the, each plugin. So plugin will call that function and extract the data from the victim to the C2. And it also uh, will gather a, nice fingerprint from the device, lots of information. Uh, and mm, the most interesting thing feature is like the plugins. Uh, however, nice funding that the guys who created this kind of software call it forensic software. Forensic software, hmm. um, quite suspicious. But anyway, uh, the core. Some few things, things that are really interesting that point, uh, from that point of view. They can configure whatever core should start up and exfiltrate data by minute, by day, or by month, doesn't matter. So it's like interesting. Uh, but what about the plugins? 14 plugins. Not all of them are super interesting because they just utilize Android API for certain purposes, such as soft lists, they gather we're using the API, the list of installed software. Or maybe shell, just remote shell, they just redirect the comments to the shell. Nothing really special. But the most interesting plugin, which is called Bill, I don't know, it's like 
referred to Bill Gates, probably not, but uh, what actually will do Bill? He will mm, imagine that we, we are not like within Telegram uh, process context. We are within WeChat context. So they infect WeChat with this kind of a loader. And they got access to the all memory of this, that application. And they, they can communicate with that application. So what they do, they call a small web view from the WeChat app uh, and authenticate on so-called WeChat Pay infrastructure. So they receive so-called, uh, they communicate with the uh, like IPC with the, that web, web view and control this web view in their own per process. They adopted their own plugin to different versions of the WeChat, so they know layout of that app uh, from like early versions to the end, uh, end ones. Uh, as a result of this kind of communication, they got CSRF token that provided by WeChat uh, infrastructure. Using that token, they crawl WeChat Pay infrastructure for the whole transaction history of the victim. So they know uh, what, what WeChat. WeChat is like a universal application. You can buy a car using WeChat in China. You can buy an apartment using WeChat in China. So it's like one top one uh, application to, for the payment in China. So as a result, they got all the transaction history like from the bank. They connect bank infrastructure to uh, know all the history of the transactions. This like unique technique, we haven't seen that before. So usually uh, attackers do like, they crawl SMS messages or uh, notifications on Android to know the balance of the victim but not like a full transaction history. So it's like quite unique. The next one, sound, the next one, sound record. So this plugin is responsible for sound recording uh, by command. So it can start recording immediately. Uh, nothing really special here, uh, but something going uh, interesting when we got old Android, so below nine. Uh, they will use some separate native library, which is called libacr.so. Uh, and this uh, library contains start three and stop three functions that will start recording. Uh, but what about like underground of these functions? Uh, imagine we are still in the context of the WeChat or Telegram. Uh, Telegram utilizes Android API to perform sound related activity, phone calls, video calls, doesn't matter. So sound record plugin will search in the other space of our own other space for the native function, a native library of the Android, which correlates to the audio related functions. And it will hook these functions and start recording silently. User will notice anything uh, on the device, which is really interesting. Another interesting moment that they got special library for the WeChat, so they hook especially functions that exported from the WeChat application. And they can also do a silent recording on the voice over IP functions that WeChat do. Again, interesting uh, and silently. Uh, what about location? Location is like native API uh, from the Android, you can do it like easily. But these guys use like custom frameworks uh, Baidu and Tencent, and they can know even the, not like what, uh, city or street uh, address of the victim, they can know even the floor where the victim resides, which is quite interesting and scary. Uh, what about attribution? So I talked about, about Android version, uh, but the reference to the iOS, iOS version is like absolutely clear. So we got the same number, uh, within the URL pass, both, both campaigns, Android and iOS. We got special name, which is called Light. This is why, that is why Light Spy. Uh, both Android version and iOS have this kind of word within the source code. Uh, about the configuration, the configuration also absolutely looks like the same. So these kind of numbers, presence, uh, both in Android version and iOS version. Uh, and the plugin layout, both versions contain a lot of uh, plugins to do some things on the mobile device. 
and some names looks like similar. For example, soft lists or base info, they got absolutely the same. Uh, and the final part is like C2 communication, how they communicate with C2 and what kind of data they, they send. And again, the same, absolutely. Uh, so they communicate with, with a JSON, unencrypted, uh, it contains the word CMD and the result of this CMD. So I think it's like absolutely the same uh, person created both versions, uh, Android and iOS. Uh, they got even endpoint API, which absolutely the same for, for, for both versions, uh, iOS and um, Android. That's it, basically. But again, this kind of interesting number. From the first slide, when uh, Kaspersky posted a report about LightSpy for iOS, they took a look at the admin panel of this uh, campaign. And they said that probably their implants could be implants for Windows and Mac OS. But there was no evidence for that. And like a month ago, we got evidence for that. Again, fancy number, uh, virus total URLs, and we got special path for Mac and from the Windows. We took a look at uh, this kind of index HTML, and we faced with implant for macOS. Not like Android, not like iOS, but also macOS. And the way how they deliver the payload and the age of this kind of campaign seems to, seems to be that they, it's quite old, so at least four years or even more. But uh, interesting how they do that. So they use one day exploit to perform RC in Safari to trigger and uh, execute arbitrary code. Then they escalate privileges using again uh, one day exploit and they mm, uh, deploy one file to the victim machine, which is called magzip. Uh, but the interesting part is the shell script. How do they do? Uh, how do they uh, download something? They use just curl. They download the files, do decrypting, and then execution and persistence, just by one bash script. Uh, and some funny moment, again, about the decryption. So all the payloads are again decrypted, encrypted, but the decryption algorithm, you can see that absolutely the same with the Android, iOS, and macOS. So again, simplistic SOAR with one bad key. Uh, and the layout of the macOS implant is the same as Android version and iOS version. So the main core is orchestrator, 10 more plugins, uh, communication with C2 from the core side, and again, LightDB for configuration of the uh, whole campaign. About the plugins, so list quite mi minimalistic if we compare with the iOS version and Android, maybe because it's not like too interesting to exfiltrate data from macOS. Who use Macs? But anyway, they can do some recording, they can uh, extract uh, browser history, uh, they can enumerate uh, local devices in the local net network, and they can uh, do uh, shell commands um, from the device. But it's not like the most interesting part of the presentation. The most interesting part is like, how they deal with the panel, how they communicate with the user of this operator, let's say. And communication is quite um, poor from the technical perspective. They got a like open panel, let's say, uh, on Chinese. So, and they call it DNS traffic traction and analysis system. Looks like suspicious, maybe DNS was used for uh, poisoning uh, web pages, I don't know. But anyway, anyone can access that web page without any limitations. Uh, and sorry for not providing the uh, translation. The most interesting button on that panel is like right upper button. It contains the list of victims of this campaign. So we got, I think, 20 victims and uh, nine of them were iOS devices, I think rest will be macOS devices. Um, as you can see, iPhone 7, 
is it like modern, more modern, modern uh, version of the uh, iPhone? I, I don't think so. It's like quite old device. The same for macOS, number 10, 13. I think we got 14 versions right now, so quite old one. But funny moment that all the data from the victim correlates with the, those plugins that we saw uh, on previous slides. So shell commands, Wi-Fi lists, uh, installed applications from macOS, like almost things uh, shown in this panel. So they, they use all the information um, and the configuration of that panel is super poor. So anyone on the internet can access it without any limitations. So the group quite active. Uh, I don't know why they still use this kind of server uh, and this, this kind of uh, one-day exploits because macOS already updated many, many, many times and all the vulnerabilities were fixed. Uh, but interesting fact that they use at least used at least uh, three versions of the implant, four, Android, iOS, macOS, and Windows. It might be the case that get, they got another implant for Linux and another implant for routers, which is like still unknown. Uh, probably uh, we analyzed the panel and we saw only, let's say, test devices. So that panel that I show you uh, right now probably is not like real victims, but test devices. Uh, if so, we know their location. Um, interesting part of that campaign is like this kind of financial related plugin, which is called Bill. We have never seen that before. So if each criminal start to do that, uh, manipulate with the bank ap application, modify it that way that he can access uh, bank backend and to see what kind of balance victim have, it's quite uh, dangerous. So if they go that way, maybe industry will change. Um, yes, I think that's it from my side. Thank you. So now for the questions. Oh. Hi, great presentation. So you mentioned test devices and you know their location. Is their location all in the same place? Yes, uh, they're all in the same place and they use the same Wi-Fi network. Uh, thanks for this uh, amazing presentation. I'm uh, pretty curious about uh, the location module, but uh, for the um, vertical part. I, I can uh, understand why they need to know the location of people uh, geographically, but uh, why it matter for them to have uh, their uh, vertical location? You see that this is like open source library. So they can use this API or they can just like use another one just for knowing the city or street number. There is no proof that they will, they will use exactly the same API uh, to know the floor of the victim. There is no proof. But in the export list of these kind of frameworks that they, uh, they use, this function exists. So nothing will stop them to use that. The reason remains unknown. So no idea. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, so I was wondering about the core for the Android implants. Those weren't actual APK files, uh, but they were loaded in uh, WeChat. Do you have any idea how those actually got onto uh, the victim devices? Uh, yes, basically uh, all the stages is like not a separate APK files. You cannot run them directly on the device. Each stage will load further stage. If you're talking about how they deliver uh, this infected WeChat, uh, probably they will use uh, um, water holding attack. So they manipulate, uh, uh, let's say, construct special web page uh, which will refer to the, this kind of APK. So you will not face with this APK on Google Play or any other public uh, source. The only way how you can download it, uh, they will attract attention using social networks to one particular web page. And from that web page, you have to download 
infected WeChat by your own self. That's the only way. Thank you for a great presentation. Um, I have one question. So they use quite old macOS exploits. How do you think is the scale? So like with this type of the exploits from 2018, you reckon how big can be the scope of compromise for them? Like, is it thousands? Is it hundreds, tens, something like that? Thank you. Um, I show you the one IP address, one panel, and it contained 20 victims, which could be uh, test devices or not. So we're not absolutely sure. So if we extrapolate this kind of value to real case, I think it could be like less than 100 of potential victims or less than 1,000 maximum, I believe. So these exploits uh, still like they were patched, but the way um, how like uh, attackers use them is like nice. So they just know that some exploit appeared and immediately they start to use it. So imagine that we, that we are in 2020 and after the publication of the exploit, they started to use it. And the part of, uh, let's say, second stage exploit, LBE, uh, was a part of Metasploit framework. Thank you for the presentation. Um, are you aware of uh, iSoon leak, basically? iSoon leak. Yeah, I'm aware that um, I will take a look at it again after all the, uh, the implants I will find. Maybe uh, they, have, they somehow connected. Yes. But, but still, um, I have to reverse uh, Windows implant. If I do that, I will probably will be sure that they use, for example, Ghostrat uh, source code to create this implant and they will deal with, with that stuff. And maybe they are connected. Because one word that you, you say, forensic application, yeah. and because it, inside the ISOON and the documentation that was leaked, they mentioned for the phishing, it's I, uh, forensic links. Uh, you can say forensics about each commercial yes. uh, surveillance tool. So it's like the better attribution. But uh, I will take a look for sure. Thanks. Other questions? Sure. Okay, thank you very much.